morning, everybody. Welcome to this session. As Alice said, um, we are looking at hygiene sling solutions today. Uh, we have a variety to show you from a compliance scenario to a more complex situation. So we will look at a variety of slings. Um, and yes, please, any questions, um, put it in the chat and then I'll answer as best I can. So to start with, we just need to understand what a toilet sling is, because you can carry out um, a hygiene or personal care transfer with a full body sling. So it's not necessarily a toilet sling, but it's a sling that's got an aperture. So I'm going to just cover that as well. But when somebody asks for a toilet sling, it's generally so that they can get good access to clothing um, to carry out personal care required. So we do have our standard option, which hopefully Alice is back at her desk and I will show you every product we look at is on the website and there are there's a lot of information for you. The data sheets that are on the website detail each sling. So for example, this is a dress sling. So you can see with the images, the access achieved by this style. However, you can also see the potential for uh, risk of slipping through. So we will talk about this in detail, but this is generally what people require. They want a sling that's got all this access to help with um, right, a hygiene another. transfer. Um, so yes, the information on the website will give you um, points about style, fabric options, codes, sizing, everything to help you. And we will cover all this. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that there was a lot of supportive um, information regarding each product available. So please, you know, always refer to the website if you have any any queries. Great. Thanks, Alice. If you come back to the studio, please. So welcome to those that have just joined before the or after the introduction. Um, just a little bit of etiquette. Please turn your cameras off and mute your mics. And then if you have any questions, put it in the chat. So as I was saying earlier, I just want to show you um, our, a standard sling. So Judith, my model here is going to help. But this is our, our standard fast fit. And actually, this has an aperture. So the aperture is this area here. And this finishes about face of spine. There will be enough access for personal care with this style. So if you've got someone that needs full body support, then you can still carry out um, um, a transfer. Although, of course, you need to take the clothing off. But any slings with a divided leg, such as this, the deluxe, all the ones that you can put on and the leg sections come around, you can achieve um, toileting with these slings. So don't think you have to have a specific toilet sling. You can achieve toileting with, with a divided leg sling. So just so you're aware of that. But if we go to the Toilet sling sling. Now, people call these different things. Toilet, dress, access, hygiene, lots of different names. But when they refer to that, then they're looking at a sling like this. As we said just now, there's not much to it. So it's essential that you have your, your patient, your client has good to reasonable upper body tone. Otherwise, there's going to be potential to slip through, which we will demonstrate. But if you've assessed and this is suitable, then the sling comes with a wide Velcro waistband as well as a clunk click. Now, Velcro or hook and loop is fantastic, but it needs to be clean and fluff free. So we always encourage you to close that when it's not in use because it will catch on things, it will catch on clothing um, in the laundry. It will then catch on the webbing, which will start to then deteriorate and fluff up. So if you've seen that on your products, then it's because this has been kept open and consequently it's caught and it will start to fluff. 
So always encourage everyone to close this when it's not in use or when it's being laundered. As if it's full of debris, it won't be effective. So we have that. The other point to show you on this style, silverly one has some slight scalloping here. So this is quite um, significant, really, because it will then give you more access to clothing. It is still quite difficult to remove clothing with this, but then that shaping will help. The other feature is the waistband. Now the waistband is stitched as wide as possible, so it comes right to the side, so it goes around the back here, right there, and that gives a lot more support. There are others that sort of have the waistband fitted to the middle of the back like that, and then there's a lot more clay, whereas the silverly one is really stitched as far to the size as possible. So just uh, important things to check with slings that you have a very good clear label, that you double check this is the right product for this client. You've conferred that with their care plan to make sure it, this is the right sling. The labels now are woven. So all labels from Silverly are woven. So they consequently don't fade like the printed ones used to. So very good um, information on the labels here. On this style, it's tucked into the seam. All the safety instructions are there. It's vital that you can read everything on there so that every all the information, safety instructions are legible. If they're not legible, then you will contravene the loaner regulations. So loaner state that you should have a legible label with any safety information clearly marked. So all that is available on that label. Sizing, colour coding for sizing. Generally with slim companies, small, medium and large are the same. Small is red, medium is yellow, um, green is large. So they do follow those guidelines. When you get larger or smaller, they may vary. Safe working load of a toilet sling is 220, which is 35 stone. So even small sizes will have that safe working load. And that is because everything on here has been um, carefully sourced, calibrated, tested to ensure that you have a product um, suitable for lifting. The webbing, the stitches, how many stitches per inch, the threads, everything is carefully checked and regularly um, calibrated to ensure safety and the products fit the purpose. So with all that, I'm going to put it on Judith. Now we are using a really open chair but so you can see visually more clearly, and um, we know that that's not the normal, but for ease of the session, we're going to use this. And of course, Judas is very able bodied. So, the good thing about these slings is that you can apply them in the chair really, really easily. You're only getting it down to the belt line here, you're not struggling to get it further down under the bottom because this is the design. So fit the waistband and then the legs. These, all these things have got like a padding. So even if you have, this is the polyester version, even if you have it in mesh, people often will ask for the mesh option. The mesh is still quilted and padded. So it's not any great benefit for water drainage if it's used for bathing, but um, because you need to have some padding for comfort. If there's no padding in those legs, it will just tourniquet like that and it won't be at all comfortable. So the legs will be padded. Introduce the legs around the femur, each leg like that, and then cross them through. Now, this is the standard way of applying it. Often the therapists have to sometimes be a little bit inventive um, and change things. It's fine as long as it's thoroughly risk assessed and it's suitable for that individual. But crossing the legs will keep the legs together. If they're not crossed, the legs will naturally splay, and then you're more vulnerable to falling through. So we will cross them through the little loop at the bottom. The tapes are colour coded, so for ease of referencing, on the shoulders we've got three colours there and the last one, and the legs. So let me just introduce the hoist. 
general rule of thumb is to start with a short shoulder long leg. However, with this one, that's so close to the spreader bar, I'm going to use a longer shoulder. A long green too, thank you. Mm. Again, it's really important before you go too far, is to just take up the slang and then check we've got it all attached. Really important, it may have slipped off, it may have been distracted and we've not got it underneath, we may have got the chair caught up. We know lots of things can happen, so always check before you actually do take up your client. Right, let's have a look at it. Students, okay. just going to move the chair so we have a bit more. As you can see, lots of access. So for removing clothing or underwear, it, you know, it's still going to be um, a struggle, but you can see there is enough access to pull loose clothing down for you to carry out your transfer. The arms are on the outside, so you've got padding here. Some come without padding, which is fine, and I'll explain that. This one has got padding. So I'm just going to check. Jude's got good tone, as we know that, but if she was to lose tone, what will happen? So we can see this is what has the potential of happening with this style. And I guess you may have got clients that that happens, but they still want to maintain this sling because of um, you know their own independence um, and for ease of the carers for hygiene. Um, but we need to be very careful. It's going to cause all sorts of problems. However, I will share a couple of tips which will help lengthen the life of using this style. So if you put it on a bit more carefully, um, and I'll share these tips with you, you will see that it will make a difference. So the first thing is to fit the waistband at the waist. It is a waist support, not chest support. It's waist. It's got to be waist level. As firm as possible and under the bust. So fit that as firm as you can. If you've got someone that doesn't like that restriction, then it may not be suitable. So unfortunately, we may not be able to cover all the scenarios because you've got to get as much support as you can from this waistband. If it's loose and slackens, um, it will just literally slip up. So then put the, the webbing cut clip buckle, again, as firm as possible. So we've done that, we've crossed the legs, and we'll start again. So we're still going on the same long leg green. Okay, arms are on the outside. So we're just going to take up the slack as we did before. So what happens now, so we fitted it lovely at the waist, we fitted it firmly. But if you imagine someone is sat, the waist takes up the slack, their body's naturally going to elongate and thin out. At that point, we need to then check and pull on the webbing strap. So we're trying everything to keep this band down, this waist support down, and actually you can tighten it, just pulling it firmly, so as firm as possible to keep the sling down. Okay. So we fitted it low, We've checked and we've tightened it as we've taken up the slack. Do you, can you fall through it now? Yeah. Pull your arms, but bring your knees up. So you can see by doing that, it makes a massive difference and it will really help. If you find that your patient is still slipping, it may be that sling's too big. So with this style of sling, I will suggest that you look at a smaller one. So Jude would easily go into the next size down. But, you know, if you're if it's too generous or your spreader bar is too big, too wide, it's opening everything up, then it may be that you need to try a smaller style uh, size. So those are my tips for remembering with this style. Fit low at the waist, tighten as it takes up the slack and think about smaller, smaller style, uh, smaller size. Those three tips are really helpful. 
and will really help to lengthen the life of using this. Um, the other thing is if you're if you've got clothing on, try and loosen the clothing before you start so it doesn't get caught up under the waistband, and then it's easier to get to. But you will find that there's going to be patients that really can't cope with this. They don't like the firmness. So then we have to look at something else. So if we need to look at a style that will still give good access, but more support, then we've got a couple of other options. I will just check um, with Alice to see if there's any questions on this particular style before we go on. No questions so far, Mandy. So this is the best case scenario. So this style, you've got someone that's got good to reasonable tone. You know, they, they can cope with sitting up. They can cope with the firmness. This is a great style and it will be potentially suitable. Just hold that for me. Yeah. However, if you then need something with a bit more support, we will look at our continental low convenience. It's on the website. All the links will be um, sent to you, so don't worry about remembering the codes. So standard toilet access link. Now I'm going to look at the Continental. Oh, you're going to leave the underarm as well as with the actual. Yes. So um, yeah, I'll show that one. So Jude just mentioned that this has got the padding, the underarm, but the one without padding looks like that. Just to give you an idea. So it's no padding here. But if the sling is kept low enough, you don't necessarily need the padding. So certainly, you know, it's, it's one of those things, if it fits well, the padding isn't needed anyway. So moving on to the next style, then, we are looking at the continental low convenience. So this, again, will fit at the waist level, but it's got a deeper back. It's much deeper back. And it will give much better support. Then we'll show you. Just hold it up for a minute and just point out some of the features. It's part of our continental range. So the continental range has this structured fabric. So it's a, a, a solid polyester. Still has the same safe working load of 220 or 35 stone. Um, but it's got a natural sheen. So it's very good to get into um, tighter chairs. It's part of the continental range because the continental um, countries like structured fabric. So that's why it's called that. But this is the, the low convenience. The low convenience, arms are still on the outside. It has a, an elasticated waist support. So as standard, it comes with one of these. So this is very stretchy. And you can tighten it and adjust it. Again, it's Velcro, so you need to be very, very careful about it catching on things. But the beauty of this is that you can interchange sizes. If we've got a small sling, but you need a medium, then you can request a medium waistband, or they're replaced if they get damaged quite easily. But they feed through the channel at the back there. There. So we put it on Judy. It's got a foam section to the back, so actually it's really firm. It's fully foam to the back and the legs, which makes introduction really easy. We're only getting it again to the belt line, so it'll slide into tighter chairs. Often um, has been successfully used for those that self in, so they're independent, they need a toilet for accessing uh, for hygiene or general um, because of, it, of its nature. You know, you can easily leave it on the hoist um, while it's not in use and then traverse the hoist into position. Leg sections have foam as well. So, again, getting into tight chairs and around is a good feature particularly with the natural sheen on the fabric so to help for insertion. Again, we're going to cross the leg sections through. Oh, yeah. 
So just as before, the arms are on the outside. We're just taking up the slack. Again, we want to make sure we've got it all on, we've got it in place. With the elasticated waistband, it doesn't loosen off because you stretched it into position. So it's one of the benefits of this. So you don't need to worry about that. And as long as you fitted it low and it's in place. Another feature to remember when fitting slings is to always make sure you get the sling down and the leg sections around towards the back of the knee. If you don't get the slings low enough, the leg sections can be positioned quite high up and then they're going to not give as much support to the femurs and bite in. So make sure you get the legs into the right place and the rest of it will sort itself out. So looking at this and comparing it, we can look at the back. So to the belt line, still there's reasonable access. So good access for toileting or, you know, if you need to do a, um, a transfer for hygiene purposes. Padding under the arm here. With, with any padding, just make sure you've got a couple of finger width under the axilla for comfort. If you find that the slings are ridden up like they can, you need to either readjust it, check it's fitted low enough, because it shouldn't do that. It's going to cause all sorts of problems with the shoulders. So it's important to double check. But a good style, Jude, can you sit through that? Yeah, it's, it's, actually, it's very comfortable. It's, so nice it's, it it is. it's got deeper, you know, with the foam back here, deeper back there to give more support. So we're looking at someone that's perhaps a bit more variable tone, that maybe as the day goes on, they get tired and they need a bit more support. So this tends to be a really good go to style. The Continental No Convenience. Strange name, but the no convenience means that they can convenience themselves. Um, that's the reason it's called like that. But a great style for general transfers as well, not just hygiene. But as you can see, you know, you've got reasonable access there. If, however, you have someone that has an issue of putting their arms over, maybe they've had a stroke, um, step to me, they've got shoulder issues, things like that. Then we do a style with, that will work very similar, but allow the arms to be on the inside. Just show you that option. It's part of the Continental. It's called the low back. It's exactly the same lower section here, but it comes slightly higher around the shoulders. And you will see that you can't actually get the arms over. So it works the same. It has the same way support channel, but the, it's slightly higher. So if you have a situation where you've got someone that has got pain here, what's really important is to remember that actually whatever sling goes on um, the hoist, you've got to make sure that it's wide enough to take the tapes to the right position. Because if you have a narrow spread of arm and you're putting a sling on, it's going to do that. With Judith, this one is ideal because it's the right width for her. But hoists make a massive difference in problem solving. So the combination of the right hoist and the right sling, um, you know, really do need to be established because with significant pain, you need to make sure the tapes are going out slightly, not in, because it will do that, crush and cause all sorts of additional problems. So just to bear that in mind, sometimes you need a four point to open up the pickup, but it's just something worth just pointing out whilst we're talking about hoists. So the low convenience and the low back, they will give the same access, um, addition, slight additional support for those with slightly more variable tone. How are we doing? Any questions, Alice? Nope, no questions so far. Very quiet. Okay. We just have another one to show you. Um, 
So what do we do in the situation where you've got a really active person, they're very regular, they may have a slightly poor tone, um, but they need a sling for hygiene purposes. So we do have a solution, which we'll show you. Okay, thanks, Steve. And that is the easy access. This is still part of the continental range, so it's made in the same structured polyester. It does have um, bony throughout, so it's very firm. But this one is going to wrap around the trunk and give lots of support. So it looks like more complicated, but if we just go through it really, really slowly, then hopefully it will make sense. So like all the others we've seen, we are only going to the belt line. Just even getting this in to read really tight chairs, you shimmy it to the belt line. And then this section wraps around the trunk. And because it's got a very good head support, you can apply this really easily on the bed. You've got a trunk section here. So this is going to wrap around and feed in the loop on the opposite side. So it's going to literally support the whole trunk. And the legs, the legs have the foam in, as we've seen before, with the low convenience thing, it's twisted a bit. So. so they go round towards the back of the knee and have the crossover like that. So we've got legs, we've got trunk, right? And then we've got a third counterbalance. So these counterbalance is going to allow a movement, so allow the, the patient to move. You've got sliders here to adjust. So if you want to sit up more or slightly recline, then you can adjust them. It will set it there and then we'll... So we've got to remember there's three tapes. So you put it on, make sure the waistband is in the right position, got your legs, and then you've got the counterbalance. So just attaching it to the hoist. Go on yellow. Just below this down a bit for you. The trunk section has various loops, which are on the last one. And then the counterbalance strap goes on last. So on this hoist, we've only got one tape, one hook each side. So ensure that the counterbalance goes on last so that it will flow on top if there's movement. Just slowly take up the yeah. slack. And this is going to wrap around Jude. completely. Right. Yeah. Right. As we close up, it will really fit firm. So we've got to ensure that the patient understands that. If they feel very restricted, it's tight, then it may not be appropriate. But we're looking at someone with really poor tone that needs lots of help. So. Mandy, we do have a quick question. Okay. Um, how much more access does this sling give versus the fast fit deluxe um, and normal deluxe? And would you still need to transfer to a bed to remove clothing, pads, etc.? Okay, well, with all these things so far, we've they go to the belt line. We've got all this here, all this spray. If you look on the website and look at the photographs and go through the little um, thumbnail photographs, it will give you lots of images and you can see there's a lot more access. So full body slings, fast fit, fast fit deluxe, they come right down here. So their base is fine. Their divided leg, so you know, you've got the divided leg and if you haven't crossed the legs, you've got more access. So the hygiene dressing slings that we're featuring today have a lot more access. So what you can see here, the access here, we've got a lot of that area, whereas the full body things will be right down here. So, you know, they are much more designed for 
toileting um, or hygiene. But it depends on the situation. This may not be suitable. So then what do you do? You have to use a full body sling. A divided leg sling will enable you to, to have a, um, enough access, but clothing will have to be removed. Whereas with these ones, you can, if you've got baggy enough um, underwear, sort of shimmy them down to the knee back here to give you enough for um, access that way. But with this one, let me just start. Oh, was there another question, Alice? Yeah, it was just about um, transferring onto the bed to remove clothing. Do you still need to do that with easy access? No, not necessarily. No. Again, it, you know, it, it depends on the individual um, it, and the clothing. But, um, you know, there is enough access. As I said, have a look at the images on the website to give you a better idea if, if it's not so visual here. But the beauty of this style, if Judith was to lose tone, I mean, you know, you've got a ring on a twister. This is going to contain someone that's really active. Thank you, Judith. That's excellent. <laughs> She's not falling out of it. So in that situation, this is an option. So for your youngsters who are active, um, athetoid CP, that type of thing, um, that, you know, that scenario, then you've got an option. Disadvantage is it will fit firm. So you've got to think about that. It will hug the body. Anyone that's, you know, got natural curves, it might fight in. But, you know, if, if you think about your the slender, um, slim situations, it, it's an option. I'm just going to show you. If I go to uncross the legs, if we uncross the legs on here, just see how much area is available then accessing. I'm just going to take these off, do you take them all off? And like I said earlier, you, you know, slings are very capable of doing lots of things and adjusted in many ways, as long as it's risk assessed. Often I'll have people saying, well, can I hook up one side shorter because I've got someone that's totally leaning and falling. So you hooked up one side just to help with a more symmetrical transferring position, which is fine. It's very capable of doing that. But if you uncross the legs on mm -hmm. on any style of sling, the legs will naturally stay. So then you have to be mindful of. Like, actually, let me just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no. Just tighten, I'm just going to tighten up this very so not so upright. Tightening up the counterbalance moment. Check that. Mm -hmm. oh, you're, still, you're still there, yeah. So with the opening the legs, I'm going to shorten the leg section. So this is what it's all about. Is Double checking. So we're going on a yellow, yellow leg. Something doesn't look right. Lower back down and readjust. So you know it's good to see if it's not the right position or you're worried. Mm. Don't carry on. We're better now. So if you can naturally, so Jude's naturally going to relax, and we can see. You will be able to gain access, but just to be mindful, though, if she naturally fold legs, the hips will go. Any questions, Alice? Yep, we, we've got a couple. Um, so first one is, can you demonstrate the waist fitting again, please? Um, we also have another one. Will it bring you to a sitting position from a supine start? Um, and then the third one, 
is are there contraindications with the use of this thing, such as people who have breathing in uh, difficulties, attachments such as colostomy bags or suprapubic catheters, heart conditions, etc. So with every type of situation, it's got to be individually risk assessed for suitability. And that involves um, all the care teams, etc., to make sure it's suitable. If you've got someone that doesn't like the restriction of the sling, this will fit firmly, then it's not suitable. With this style, you have got you don't have a waistband here. So if you've got a peg, then this area is free. If you have a catheter, it may be that you don't cross the legs, so it's not going to inter interfere with the catheter. Uh, again, literally risk assess. I, I can't say yes or no because I don't, you know, we're not clinical and we don't know the ind individual situation. All we're doing is pointing out some options that you may then be able to take that style and try it to see whether it's suitable. So picking up from supine. Um, so then with a head support, you certainly can um, from the bed, particularly with the counterbalance, because it will just naturally adjust as you come up into a seating position. So this is absolutely fine. And um, what's the third question? Waist support. Oh, demonstrate the waist support. So let me, I'm, just, I'm assuming it's on this style. So let me just take it off. If it's not, just remind me, Alice and I'll go back. Let's just take this off and undo it. So you have sling wraps around the trunk here. So it's one that you virtually wear. And then you've got these tapes here. They cross over and feed through the loop on the opposite side like that. So once you've got the sling into position, and it's got to fit. At the waist, keep it, you know, get it down. As I said earlier, it's really important to get the leg sections down and around towards the back of the knee to start with. If you fit it too high, this is going to be mid thigh and um, too far back. This will be higher up and the whole thing will not be comfortable. So get the sling down and around. This fits at the waist. It will close up. If you're finding it's closing up too tight, undo on and put on a loosen fitting. There's options here for sizing around the waist. So you just need to readjust it. It will naturally close and push up the bust. So just be mindful of that. But you know, it's the most supportive of toileting things, the most extreme. So it's often can be the last resort for maintaining that independence. However, we know there's lots of people that use them. I know of um, them in care homes, you know, they are, they have been successful for many scenarios. So it is, although it looks quite bulky um, and restricting, it, it is a fairly popular style. So this is called the Continental Easy Access. So if you're looking on the website, it's the Easy Access option. Any other questions, Alice? No, nope, none so far, Mandy. OK, so they those are the stars I was featuring today. Um, as I said, they vary from attitude, the most compliant situation, which is the toileting sling, up to the more um, complex ones. So the continental ease, uh, low convenience, low back and the easy access all available on the website. Uh, we do have um, a poster we can send you, which I will just show you. If you would like this poster, then we can get it out to you. It's a sling selection of all the products on the website. And it does show you um, all the styles. Alice, I don't know whether you have it available. I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you to pull it up, but- A few seconds. Oh, thank you. And then it, you can see that slings are in um, 
families. So standard slings, deluxe leg slings, toileting access slings, and it will help you to sort of see at a glance what's available and use it as a, like a picking list of styles if you need to pick a range. Um, but it, it's quite useful. It gives you the outline drawing and the product code. And we will get this to you, I think, after the session. Um, we will send out a little feedback form and then ask you to kindly give some feedback and then we'll send it to you. Oh, thanks, Alice is pulling it up. So this is what it looks like. So as I said, it's they're in families. Today we've looked at the, the line for those styles. Um, so that you know that they are they're going to give you a lot of access for hygiene. But you know, look at all the divided leg slings. We talk, you know, we had the question about toileting. There is enough access. They they fit towards the base of spine, but you can see that there's limited then access to get to clothing. But a, a, you know, a useful little poster if if you need one, um, then please. Make sure you get that. Mandy, but we do have a quick question. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, asymmetrical configuration of loops. Is this appropriate on all slings and then in brackets when clinically assessed? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So often, particularly when we have, you know, real curvatures, asymmetrical shapes, and you've got uh, a carer trying to hold on to someone, then just slightly adjusting can make a massive difference, usually to the shoulders. So literally just hooking up one side slightly um, shorter. So anyone that's got a real significant curvature and an asymmetrical shape, then try it. As you say, you know, risk assess it, try it. It may may help. Certainly it may help. The thing's capable of doing that. So yes. Any others, uh, Alice? No, thank you, Mandy. Well, thank you all very much for attending. Um, I hope it's been helpful.